setting meet records, setting school records, running away from the competition. These are just a few of the phrases that have been used to describe Ottawa Glendorf's Alexa Fortman, who is having a stellar track season. This is the middle of track season as we're doing this interview. And you really have had a great season so far, haven't you? Yeah, I've definitely met a lot of the goals I set for myself at the beginning of the year. What kind of goals did, did you have at the beginning of the year? I definitely wanted had specific times that I kind of wanted to run, but I also wanted to make sure that every race was run for God and not for my own glory. I love hearing you say that, and we're going to talk about that quite a bit more in just a moment. Uh, but let's talk about the season. And as I mentioned, we are videotaping this interview in the middle of Alexa's sophomore track season. By the time you watch it, we may already know what has happened, but Alexa, uh, you lost your freshman season due to COVID. So this is your first year to be on the track as a high schooler. Um, have you lost a race yet? Um, I have not lost an individual race, but our relays have a couple times, so we've done some chasing there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So individually, when you set out your goals, um, what athletic things have you had to do to achieve them? Um, I, well, I've been training for this track season for over a year because we lost last track season. And my coaches have definitely helped a lot. They've mapped all the workouts out with like specific times so that I can meet my goals. So you run the 400 and the 800. Yep. Two relatively different races in a sense. One's an all-out sprint. The other one's closer to a sprint as you get more competition, but it's more of a, a paced race. How do you plan for each one? For the 400, I pretty much just go and see what I can do, like go all out. The 800 is more a little bit strategy, kind of easing into that first lap and then just giving all you got that second lap. What's going through your mind as you are, as you are running that? Two laps around the track, um, strategy, but yet fast. I'm just focusing on God because he truly pulls me through each race and just kind of going with it and seeing how I can do. So how... Let's talk about God. Let's talk about the God factor. Um, and I want to talk more about maybe your testimony in just a little bit. But, but, you know, we don't hear that a lot. We don't hear people say, what do you do when you're 800? I focus on God. That is, that is a great thing. I love hearing that. But we don't hear that very often. How is God really pulling you as you, as you race along? The, the 800 especially is like, it's just such a hard race to do, like humanly by yourself. And you really need God to like lead you and it, most people run to like win a medal or something, but I just want to give God the glory through it. <laughs> That's incredible to hear. Well, let's step back and uh, talk a little bit about the things that happened in your life that brought you up to where you are now. So growing up, um, a little bit of struggle school-wise, mm -hmm. dealing with friends, dealing with people. Um, it wasn't always easy, was it? No, school, like teenage school is hard for anyone. Just everyone's changing and trying to make new friends and fit in. And it was just fifth through eighth grade was very difficult for me. And what kind of things, um, or who, who was influential in your life during that time? Definitely my parents and grandparents. Like they all have committed their lives to Christ and they definitely just, I could tell them my problems and they would help me through them. Now I've talked to a lot of young people who grow up in Christian households, but they're not talking the way you are as a 10th grader. What I hear coming out of your heart and your mouth is really encouraging. Um, how did you get to that point? Did you start reading the Bible? Did you find yourself a good, good youth group or, or a, a good surroundings? Or was there a point where it just, it just lit up for you? One day you just knew that God was real. Yeah, it's kind of just like an aha moment. And then I started digging deeper and like wanting to know more and just growing closer in my relationship with Christ. What have you, is, is there, are there any verses or anything? And I just randomly have asked her this. I didn't prepare this ahead of time. But are there any verses? Are there any songs or any things that have been a real impact um, for you? One verse, 1 Corinthians ten thirty one: whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. And that's truly like what I hold myself to each race. So you are a multi-sport athlete mm -hmm. in the fall, cross-country standout, also a soccer standout, played basketball, now you've got track going. Um, a lot of people allow sports to become their God, but you are allowing God to move you through your sports, mm -hmm. through your talents. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so now as you move into looking at your future, 
um, a lot of people would just be focusing specifically on, well, this is my talent. This is what I'm going to do. How is God going to be the leader to help move you into what you're going to do in your future? I'm definitely going to like pray a lot before I make a decision about where I want to go to college and just wherever he wants me to go and where he leads me to. That's an exciting thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump back a little bit back to, to uh, the track season that she's currently in right now. Um, state track is going to be coming up. Um, we're going to air this, this interview probably even beyond state track, so people will know the results. But as you look into your goals moving into uh, track, this, this state track, what are your goals and how does God fit into all of that? I definitely want to just do my best in each race and not only qualify individually, but maybe get one of our relays to go as well. Just have like a team experience and God already knows what is in store and he's just truly going to like produce the results that he wants. Mm -hmm. And are you finding that um, as you run with your relay, you mentioned you guys haven't always won. You've had mm -hmm. some some catch up times to mm -hmm. do. Um, but how do you see God working through that as well? Um, well, we pray before each time we run, and it's hard, like, all working together for, to achieve a common goal, and we've gotten better. We're all slowly improving to, for the team. All right, Alexa, you have two more years coming up in high school. Mm -hmm. Do you have additional goals that you are hoping to reach before you graduate? Um, definitely just getting my times, like, even lower and maybe um, breaking a couple more different records at meets. I, I check those often, and... Just doing my best. 57-ish is your current best. 57.5, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Yeah. And maybe 214. I don't remember the um, exact things is your current best yeah. right now. Do you have an eye on specific numbers that you're aiming for? Um, 400 is just a sprint, so just as fast as I can go. But the 800, I am wanting to try to get to a 210 or lower. Good goals. Sounds mm -hmm. great. <laughs> so if you could give any encouragement to athletes who really do want to make sure that God is in the forefront, that they don't allow the winning, don't allow all of that to be the top. Do you have any advice that you would encourage other high school athletes who say, I really want God to be in charge? Like, no matter what's going on in your life, God will pull you through even the hardest valleys, and he will truly lead you. He'll be right there by your side.